Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, JTV Hot Trends. It's your girl, the one and only Sophie B, of course. And you know, on JTV Hot Trends, along the way, we meet interesting people. And in the studios, we have with us none other than Mr. Frank Mahoney. Mr. Mahoney, how are you? I am great. You know, it's definitely an honor to have you in the studios. I highly respect you in the entertainment field. And I do because you're so professional. You definitely know what you're doing when it comes to entertainment, whether it be sound, lighting, uh, artists, whatever it is, you are truly a professional. Hey, so you. again, welcome. Um, I wanted to have you on the show because um, I wanted to discuss or shed light on um, artists slash talent in the BVI and people not really recognizing the hard work that artists you know put out there as well as talent and I wanted your perspective on why is that why is that happening within the BVI for instance I host I'm a host and people love using my services but when they hear they have to pay for the services now is like right. no nah. but they don't mind bringing in a host from abroad and paying them. What are your views on that? Well, um, there's a bit of, of balance that has to be reached. And depending on where you're at in your career mm -hmm. um, speaks to how much you might be able to demand in fees. Right. Um, a promoter, for instance, will go about his business of trying to make money mm -hmm. in a show. Right. Um, how many people show up, how many people buy drinks at the bar, who is target audiences, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Now, if let's say you have two artists mm -hmm. and let's say you have an audience of 500 people mm -hmm. and you've paid the, those artists, um, say, $1,000 each and you feel comfortable that those two artists will bring in maybe 1,000 people at... 20 bucks a head, which is roughly $20,000. Right. Now, there's a local artist that you want to give an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. But then the question has to be asked, if I add this local artist mm -hmm. at what expense and cost and how many more people are going to come to justify mm -hmm. what I have to pay this artist? Right. So let's say um, your fee is $500 for a half an hour or 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, twenty dollars a person um, is the gate fee. Am I going to? Is this person going to bring an extra hundred dollars? Right. And that's a question. You know, it's a it's a real question a promoter has to ask themselves. I mean, even for international artists, you know, the more artists you add, the more expense you have. At the end of the day, a promoter is trying to walk away with you know money. some money in his pocket. Right. So, um, you know. So depending on where you're at in your career, uh -huh. um, I remember, I remember um, Marge Smith had um, come to me while we were doing the music fest and says, um, there's this new guy, John Legend. They just want $7,000 for him. Wow. Um, and I was like, John Legend? <laughs> Who's John Legend? <laughs> uh-huh, uh -huh. You know, so um, he turned him down. Didn't, didn't bother with him, wow. um, obviously. Now... John Legend could demand a half a million dollars, a million dollars for an hour and 15 minutes. Right. Um, so depending on where you're at in your career, what your demand is. And the reason, I mean, in, in just to be a little detailed, the reason why John Legend asks for a million dollars is if John Legend says, I'm going to be at Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. which holds maybe about 25,000 people, the tickets would be sold out in a day. Right. And the promoter would easily make a couple million dollars for himself. Mm -hmm. John Legend would get his million dollars, drink sales, on and on and on. Right. So he's at that point in his career. He may not stay there forever, mm -hmm. but that's where he's at. Um, Ten years earlier, I was turning down $7,000 because yeah. he was an unknown. So I would say to local artists, um, know what your worth is. There, there's no need to give away your service entirely. Right. But... Um, Get your name out there. Mm -hmm. It is more important for you to be seen in front of a crowd of a thousand people than it is to collect an extra two hundred dollars. Right. In the long run. I understand, but it brings my next question: Who determines the 
stage of their career or the level of the career. For me, I've been doing this for about 20 plus years. And I still have people call me and like, oh, well, it's a nonprofit. Oh, well, you know, we ain't got no money. Oh, you know. So it's like, who determines that? Doesn't the artist determine well? Because you said, you know, know your worth. And if I know that, listen, when I am hired for an event, I give it my all. I'm professional. I deserve what my fee is. Right. Okay. Right. So who determines that? Well, in a market-driven economy, the market mm -hmm. decides. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say Heineken bears sell for um, three dollars mm -hmm. at a local bar on Tortola, mm -hmm. but it sells for eight dollars on Peter Island right. or ten dollars. Mm -hmm. um, they've already done enough homework and research to know that the clientele that we have is willing to pay and let's face it they can't go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. They're secluded on this island. Right. So we're gonna get them for this eight dollars. Mm -hmm. um, if someone locally tries to buy, sell their bears at eight dollars no one will buy it right. so they'll eventually have to bring their price down to compete with others who are in the market um, spokespersons like yourself mm -hmm. what are they asking what are they getting what is the going rate mm -hmm. and um, in addition to that you have to sell yourself right. you have to be able to convince a promoter or someone who needs your services that I am going to be an asset mm -hmm. um, to your company. Or maybe you says, look, I'll do this one um, at a minimum cost, mm -hmm. but this is my regular rate. So you don't think that there's a mentality within the BBI that we just do not support our locals, our local artists, our local talent. You, you don't think that... that, that is, no, I, I wouldn't tell you that's not true, but, that's, but that's, true, that's true worldwide. I've even said, listen, give me $50, $20. They, they, just, ref, they just don't see why they should have to pay for my services. And it's, it's really frustrating because this is my life. This is how you know, I make money. This is right. a business for me. And I can't constantly just say, okay, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. So I just personally feel that there is this mentality within the BVI that they don't see the worth, worth of our local artists and, and talent. And they, would, they will find that money and pay somebody from okay. abroad. There's a, a book I read a long time ago. It's called the it's called the the International Consultant. Mm -hmm. And what the book was about was consultants that would go. Let's say uh, I was a consultant, a construction consultant here in the BVI. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of us here. Everyone knows me. We grew up together. While I may be very good at my craft and what I do, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean as much as home. Now I go to Anguilla. And there may be people in Anguilla that is twice as educated, mm -hmm. twice as bright, and has 10 times the skills that I do. Yeah. But somehow, me coming from the outside, going into Anguilla, mm -hmm. gives me a higher status. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily unique to the BVI. Right. Um, international consultants can go, I mean, they come here to the BVI. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and same thing, they demand a much higher pay. You have to fly them in, mm -hmm. you have to put them up, you have to do all these things. Right. And it's not that their criteria, their education or anything else is that much better than a local person with the same skill set. Mm -hmm. So it's something that people deal with. Yeah. Um, local bands. We have plenty of fine local bands here, but our argument would be that, well, we see them every day. Mm -hmm. um, but if you went abroad and made it big, which some of our local artists have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you then come home, you can then demand what you could not have demanded while you were home. And when you come home is then you get the support from Absolutely. the people. Because Absolutely. when you're here all the time. And it, it happened with Tina Turner. Tina Turner was nowhere in the United States mm -hmm. um, at 35, 40. I mean, the U.S. has a way of, you know, you're hot today, you're gone tomorrow. Yeah. She actually ended up in the U.K., mm -hmm. um, built up her career and everything else, and then came back to the U.S. as a huge success. Right. But she, you know, she wouldn't have gotten it done if she just stayed in the U.S., trying to get jobs here and right. there and that's kind of the nature of the business but like i said earlier i mean it's it's important to know your worth mm -hmm. 
it's important to be an expert on not just what you do, yeah. but understand your client and your base. Right. And, and what I mean by that is, okay, you ask yourself, well, why am I not getting the jobs or the pay that I want? Okay. And who is? Who in the industry here in the BVI that has just about the same skill, what are they doing different? Mm -hmm. What are their connections? A lot of times what you get and how you get it has to do with relationships. True. Um, Network. Networking. Mm -hmm. um, having a website. Mm -hmm. um, people are copycats. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so if you're popular and become popular mm -hmm. with this group, then that group that you want business from will tend to follow. Right. Because if you're good enough for them, then you're, you're, you're good enough for me. Right. Um, name dropping. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes when I go to a job and I want something, you know, I'm happy to be able to say, well, you know, I've worked at Necker Island. I, I do a lot of things on Peter Island. Right. I've done the Super Yacht Regatta for the last six years. Um, these are events that have very, very high standards and demands. Mm -hmm. So naturally, someone would look and say, well, okay, if he did that, he surely he could handle right. this. Um, you drop someone's name like, oh, we, were, we did John Legend, mm -hmm. for instance, or Aretha Franklin, or Roberta Flack, or right. a number of artists. And the assumption is, if they were able to do that, mm -hmm. then surely they can do this. Right. And so... You know, understanding your, your target audience, who your clients would be, the business that you want from them and how you would go about getting it, mm -hmm. is understanding what their needs are and adding value. At the end of the day, if you're going to ask for $100, $500, $1,000, mm -hmm. what are you bringing to the table to add $1,000 worth of value? Standing on my feet all night. I'm just playing. <laughs> well, you know, Frank, that is some awesome um, words of advice there. But I want to talk about uh, the Music Fest. Of course, everybody know that you were fantastic uh, when it came to the Music Fest. Tell us a little bit about that and how that experience was for you. Because the last time we spoke, you said that you would think about it, you know, to do it again. Yeah. The, the, the Music Fest, you know, and, it, and, and, and while my name was called, you know, we had, um, we had a great team. Mm -hmm. um, teamwork is the key to success with huge events. Yeah. Um, after, after our second year, our team hardly met except for once or twice. Mm -hmm. They were all professional. They all knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, by extension, the event was a success. Um, it is much more challenging to do that event now. Not that it cannot be done, mm -hmm. but um, the financial challenges that exist, not just in the BVI, but worldwide, makes yeah. it that much more challenging. Um, while Kane Garden Bay is it just a remarkable, I mean, it's magical, actually, mm -hmm. venue. There were major challenges with regards to having an event on a beach mm -hmm. and not being able to control your gate. Yeah. I didn't invent the music fest or music festivals in the Caribbean. Right. Um, in our learning process, our group, we went to Air Jamaica's Jazz Festival. We went to St. Kitts Festival, St. Lucia. I mean, we, we studied, we looked at how they did things. Mm -hmm. And um, we used that as a mold for what we were wanted to create. Um, the hugest event we had went to was Air Jamaica's Jazz Festival. They had upwards of 25,000 people mm -hmm. at that event. I mean, Al Green, Patti wow. LaBelle, I mean, you know, but um, great sponsorship. Yeah. But they had a gate. All of these events had a gate. Mm -hmm. um, having an event and not being able to afford um, or not being able to collect for 50% of the people mm -hmm. that attend that event is not a winning formula. Yeah. Point blank. Full stop. Right. Um, so we were able to do it. Yeah. We were able to do it because we had 
excellent sponsorship. Okay. So for the years that we were able to do it, we had exceptional sponsorship. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's not to say that it can't happen again, mm -hmm. but it has to be a situation where you can have a proper gate. Right. If not, um, it would not be possible because while sponsorship may help you, you know, get on, get get going and so forth, mm -hmm. it's not something that's going to last forever. And whether that be from government or your sponsors, mm -hmm. um, government, in my opinion, we should not rely even 50% on. Right. More like maybe 25% for events like this because it does generate revenue. But over a number of years, it should be able, if you're managing the event properly, mm -hmm. it should be able to self-sustain. It exactly. should be mm -hmm. able, each year you should have a little more seed money. Mm -hmm. You collect your gate, you control your bars, and, you know, the event just goes from strength to strength. All right. And if, you know, the sponsorship is there, you find a great location where you have the gate, Frank Mahoney would do it again. Um... Frank Mahoney and a, team and a team would do it again. Okay. Um, it is, I, I can't stress enough the, um, the importance of having a good team in, in anything you do. Mm -hmm. Once it's a, 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 an event or a business or whatever, having the right people um, on your team makes all the difference. All right. Yeah, That's I mean, um, interesting. Like I said, my, my name gets called, but for the music festival, we didn't really have ahead of the event when we were in our meetings. Really? It was more of a round table. Mm -hmm. um, Marjorie Smith, who's my ex-wife, she knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Sherilyn Armstrong, Neville Smith, Sophia, Ghana. These were all professionals. Right. Um, we made, we, we had a saying, you know, come with an idea, but don't get married to it because you might have to get divorced. Right. And um, every one of these team members knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I never, I'm not a person that looks over people's shoulders. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in micromanaging. If you didn't fit into the team, it would be best that at some point we let you go so you find a place where you could fit in right. and bring someone on board who did fit in with our team. Mm -hmm. So it's important, you know, to, to have the right team to move forward. Good stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Mahoney, it was such a treat to have you here in the Thank studios. You. Again, so much respect for you in the entertainment field. And hopefully artists looking on and talent, whatever, they take that advice and, and, yeah. and go from there. Yeah. Right. And, you know, with, with artists, local artists, we have tons of great local talent. Um, you know, just stick with it. You know, stick Rome wasn't it. built in a day. True. True. You, you, if you're serious about your craft, you know, I, I would encourage anyone who's seriously trying to get into this singing, wherever you get an opportunity, whether you're being paid or not, mm -hmm. initially, yes. you should, if Village Key gives you a chance to sing during lunch hour for 15 minutes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do it. Do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Mahoney, once again, thank you so much for being thank a part you for of our trends. Me. It was a treat, for real. Thank you. All right. More to come, ladies and gentlemen. All you got to do is keep it locked.